Welcome to the cold Northwest. We have been having some really cold weather. Uh, the day I started this video, I think it was like one degrees and we had some sub-zero days also. And But in this video, I wanted to just share with you some good and hearty meals uh, that I often make during the winter time. So maybe you can get some ideas of what to cook in cold weather or what to bake and sometimes I even do new things just I just it's a time to cook and bake and have some good hearty meals for the family so in this video I will be sharing with you two evening meals that I made and even a couple glimpses of some things that we have for breakfast and I will link everything down below that I can. I will write out some recipes for you guys in the description box below. So you have to check that out if you want to know uh, the recipes and uh, even some, I made some of these before that I put on YouTube and I'll just link the YouTube video down below. And this, um, these pancakes that I'm making for breakfast are called, they're actually called Trim Healthy Mama Pancakes. They're made with rolled oats, cottage cheese, and um, lots of egg whites. And so it's just, it's a very simple, it's one of my favorite pancakes ever. So that is what we had in the first morning. We had pancakes, some eggs, and a little bit of sausage. So in this video, I am just doing voiceovers as I work. And here I am starting to get my bread ready. It had been rising and I actually started it the night before. You have to make a starter and let it sit for up to 16 hours. And I actually made a video of this quite a while ago and I will post the link down below so that you can just watch it if you want, if you haven't already. And that way you can get the recipe and learn how to do it. It's very simple and I make it quite often. You make it in a Dutch oven. Now you don't have to. In my video I tell you how different ways you can do it. But I make it in my Dutch oven and I usually use parchment paper but this time I didn't have any so I just sprayed uh, it with cooking spray and it turned out just fine. So that was the first thing I started for dinner and the I do actually not have a recipe for my um, salmon, green beans, or rice, but I will try to tell you what I did, and I might write it out, but I might not have the ratios of everything, but um, it should be very simple. It's pretty simple to do baked salmon and green beans and rice. bread was proofing I started with my rice and this is jasmine rice that I'm using and I heated up a kettle of water until it was boiling and then I stirred in my rice and a little bit of salt you just have to look on your rice package to see um, how you're supposed to make it it's very simple you just uh, I think I had to cook my jasmine rice for about 45 minutes on low with the lid on top.
rice was cooking, I started preparing my salmon. And as you could tell, I put some foil in a pan and liberally put on some olive oil. And then I put my salmon skin down. And this salmon actually came from the Kootenai River. So it's river salmon. I love salmon from the ocean, but uh, this is pretty good this way. I actually, we actually really loved it this way. And so I sprinkled on some more olive oil on top and then I just layered it with um, salt and pepper and I cut half of a lemon and squeezed that lemon all over it. And then I also just put on some lemon slices and crushed garlic and rosemary. I will try and kind of write out the recipe down below for you so that you have a good idea how to make it. I mean, it's so simple. You just kind of have to put your own seasonings on it and however much salt that you want. And yes, it just turned out amazing. And you don't want to bake this uh, till almost all of the rest of your dinner is ready because it only takes like 10 to 14 minutes on 450 degrees. Next, I melted some butter in a pan and I let it slightly turn brown. I think it just gives the green beans a really good flavor. So that's a little tip for you guys if you haven't done that to just brown your butter slightly and then put in the green beans. And those green beans came from our garden. And, um, and then what I did, I just put on some salt and pepper and I crushed later when it was when the green beans were almost done I crushed in some garlic and sauteed them just a little longer and then I was done it's so simple just put seasonings in that you want and every once in a while I will even put on some uh, parmesan cheese but this time I didn't I just had some seasonings and like salt and pepper and garlic mostly and the brown butter and it just made it really good. By now it was time for me to get the bread in the oven and I think it bakes about 30 minutes and then I put some garlic in my green beans and as you can tell I actually like to fry my green beans a little bit um, crispy or till they turn a little bit brown not too much just some of them I know that some people like their green beans very almost raw tasting but I kind of like to fry mine a little harder and I do them a few different ways but this is one of the ways I do them So 
So here in my wok pan, I will be frying my rice. And first of all, I will put in some diced celery, some frozen peas, and some chopped onion. And then I'll put in my rice and fry that up with some seasonings, with some garlic, onion, pepper, whatever you want to put in. And then later I will crack in an egg and kind of slowly mix that in. And it just makes for a really good fried rice. Well, this is day two, and I just wanted to give you a few shots of the cold weather outside, and then I will get on with my meal. First thing I did was make a hearty breakfast of steel cut oats. Now none of my children ever really liked oatmeal, but they absolutely love steel cut oats. I'm not sure, it's just a different texture to it or what it is, but we all like it and we top it with a lot of stuff like blueberries uh, and often I just thaw a few blueberries from our freezer and then we also add raisins and um, different kinds of nuts whatever you want to add on you can do that and then we also will put on some maple syrup and a little bit of milk and eat it down and it's it's really good and really filling
lot of fun making this meal. To be honest, I actually have never made a Swedish tea ring before, but it turned out amazing with my first try. And for some reason, I just had such an urge to make, make some pastry of some kind, you know, just get my hands in the dough. And so I kept looking and researching and uh, looking for recipes and finally I landed on a Swedish tea ring and I had so much fun making it. It's actually way simpler than it looks. And so yeah, I, I think I used actually a couple recipes. I looked off a couple recipes how to make this one. So I'll write it out in the description box below for you as best as I can and I hope it turns out great for you if you try it. Now with a Swedish tea ring, you can do all kinds of fillings. I did this like um, cinnamon uh, nut filling with some even some chocolate chips, but you could do a cream cheese filling. I would like to try that again, like a cream cheese raspberry filling, something like that. I just, yeah, I just, it, I was so happy how it turned out, but it was a lot bigger than I thought it would be become. So I couldn't really take it off of the tray. I had to leave it in the tray to serve, but that was fine. Yeah, it was it was really good. I really, really loved this, and I really want to try it again sometime. So while the pastry dough was on the rise, I started cutting up my vegetables for my chicken pot pie stew. And actually, my stew was a turkey pot pie stew because I had some canned turkey broth and meat that I used instead of the chicken, which it tastes per almost exactly the same. So I just got out my big pot and or my Dutch oven and I put in two jars of this turkey broth and meat and then added a little bit of water. By the way, I got this recipe from Megan Fox Unlocked and she has her own YouTube channel. She's a young Mennonite mom and she does really well I think with her YouTube and she had this recipe on already quite a long time ago. So I'll try and find that video that she had it on and she had the recipe written in her description box. So. Um, I will link that res I will link that video down below for you. What I like about this pot pie stew is that you actually make your own homemade noodles, which is extremely simple. Only like egg, water, and flour basically, and you just make little square noodles and put it in. So you do that instead of making an actual pot pie. You just make your noodles in it and it's such a satisfying taste and flavor with, with all the vegetables and the meat and the noodles. Yeah, it's just really good, especially if it's all made from scratch.
while the stew was simmering, I went ahead and started rolling out uh, this tea ring dough. And it was a little bit tough to roll out. I think it was a little bit stiffer than it should have been. But yeah, I just rolled it out and then you topped it with butter, cinnamon sugar, and I had sliced almonds and a chopped walnuts and some chocolate chips that I put on top of that yet. And then after that, I rolled it up. ended up having a whole big audience around me watching as I was doing this. It's always so fun for them, I think, when mom makes something new. They gotta see what I'm doing and how it's done. So yeah, I think they were pretty eager to taste this Swedish tea ring. you can see I sliced all around that ring of dough. I sliced it about uh, I think one to two inches apart and I only went in about three-fourths of the way and then after that you just go around and twist every slice to one side and kind of overlap them a little bit and it just turned out beautiful. I loved it. I can't wait to try another one sometime. While I was waiting on the tea ring for its final rise, I quickly mixed the noodles together that I was gonna put in the stew. So simple, it's very simple, just flour, egg, and water, and a little bit of salt. And then you roll it out and cut it up and just plop it in your soup and let it simmer for a while. Well, my Swedish tea ring was finally ready to go into the oven, so I quickly brushed on an egg wash, and I could not wait to see how it turned out. It's 
So here I'm putting in the little homemade noodles and then I just let it slowly simmer for a little bit until the noodles kind of puff up just a little bit and soften. I made a quick glaze of powdered sugar, water, vanilla, and a pinch of salt, and I drizzled it over it all. Well, I really enjoyed making this video for you all. It was a lot of hard work, but it was a lot of fun for me. And I hope that this blessed you and I hope it inspired you even to go out in your kitchen and try something new. So I hope you have a wonderful week and we will see you next time as always.